I'll admit, I was a little worried about traveling into a huge city and living there for three months. All the buildings, people, cars. Would I have a chance to see the wildlife I love? Would there be anything worth watching from my office window while I would be up in our six-story apartment all day? Thankfully, the answer was yes, though perhaps it isn't entirely right to call my new friends wild. Meet our Taiwanese roof cats. We were told when we were looking at our summer apartment that often roof cats will stop by to visit our gardens, but we had no idea that we'd be lucky enough to be able to be visited by regulars. But sure enough, we have a trio of cats who stop by almost every day to visit us. Though they're very happy to watch us from a safe distance and disappear any time we poke our heads out the door. So, who are these cats, and what does it mean to be a Taiwanese roof cat? Well, we've learned roof cats are very popular in Taipei, especially as the city is built so that buildings, balconies, and rooftops press up against one another and even overlap, making a perfect sky-high walkway for a well-balanced feline to walk across. Buildings here have a lot more overhangs, balconies, open rooftops, and a huge variety of signs, extra roofing, and metal grates that give the exterior of the buildings a lot of varied and unusual shapes. Not like the uniform, flat apartment buildings with timid balconies that Chips and I are used to back in the United States. So, are all these felines stray cats? Well, we thought so until our landlady taught us that, as far as she knows, all the cats we have seen are actually pets from the local apartments. Pet culture has really taken off in Taiwan in the last decade or so. In fact, Taiwan was recently the first Asian country to ban cat and dog meat from any market, and have also toughened laws to impose heavy fines, jail time, and public shaming on those who abuse companion pets. Everywhere we look, there are a lot of dogs on leashes and many, many cats lounging around on the patios and parks of the city, and several high-end pet shops and pet hotels too. While we have seen one or two cats with collars, for the most part, none of these mysterious roof cats wear them. Though several have the notched ears of cats who have been caught for spay, neuter, and release programs, our landlady let us know that one of the locals, a French woman who has lived in the neighborhood for over 30 years, is a major cat lover and took it upon herself to catch, vaccinate, and spay or neuter almost all the cats in the neighborhood. Quite a feat, considering all the perfect hiding places there are. As a result, none of these cats look particularly unhealthy, especially compared to many of the feral strays I've helped back in the United States. The neighborhood is very kind to the cats too, leaving out food and water for the cats in front of many of the shops, and setting out open umbrellas when the rain is heavy for the cats to hide under. So, what does that mean for us? Well, we've got guests, visitors who stop by every day to watch Chips and I as we move around our apartment. To them, we're probably the mysterious new visitors. This is their territory, after all. And so far, we've enjoyed a mutual fascination between ourselves and the three main cats who stop by almost every day. I've nicknamed them Bird, Noble Lady, and Boss. They've been wonderful companions for me during the long, hot days here in Taiwan, while I'm perched at my desk working. And greeting Bird as he shows up to watch us from his usual spot every morning has been one of my favorite parts of the day. But overall, although these cats are probably someone's pet, they're uninterested in us. No pets. They clearly get all the food they need elsewhere and mostly ignore what we set out for them. And for the most part, they just seem to enjoy sleeping in our rooftop garden and watching us. Bird, Noble Lady, and Boss are not the only cats you can find on the roof either. There are several others sprawled around the various perches in the neighborhood. After a few days, we've started to recognize certain spots belong to certain cats. Though the park down behind our apartment is covered with several interchangeable orange tabbies, who are probably somehow related to Boss, and so far we've not been able to tell the difference between those more distant felines. I have to say, I'm really happy moving temporarily away from the green forest I've come to love in Michigan, and all the constant wildlife that I get to watch from my window there, for a big city no less, made me a bit nervous. But seeing all these cats helped to remind me that there's usually something wild to discover anywhere. Though sometimes what you find may make you feel like the discovery instead. 
If you would like to see more of our adventures in Taiwan with our roof cats exploring pet shops and leaning off the top of six-story buildings to try to snag a picture of the fast-flying city birds and huge, weird lizards hiding in the trees, then be sure to check out my vlog channel, where we are working on daily vlogs, sharing the entire adventure of our summer here in Taiwan. Until next time, guys, stay curious!